person who wakes up in the morning and spends way more time doing my hair and makeup than eating breakfast before work. I'm the kind of person who reads Cosmo way too many times a year to find out the same 42 sex tips and if they found a new one yet. <laughs> I'm the kind of person with a small purse dog that has her own sizable wardrobe and a personal carry bag. But I'm also the kind of person who wrote her senior thesis on the disruption of the CCR5 CXCR4 chemokine co-receptors on the surface of your CD4 positive T cells in order to prevent and cure an HIV in infection. And, <laughs> and I happen to be a lab tech in a gene therapy-based research lab that's focusing on cures for HIV. So in college, I decided to major in general science with a focus in chemistry and biology. And shortly after, I realized my passion for research. And I like research for three reasons. Number one, I want to help people. Number two, I want to help a lot of people. And number three, I want to change the world. But before I can start changing the world, I have to get my foot in the door, right? Well, that actually ended up being the hardest part. So for two years, I approached every professor I knew that had a lab. I asked my advisor for countless outside opportunities. I contacted so many HR reps in the area. And I scoured way too many Craigslist ads and some really weird things out there. So, <laughs> as you can guess, for two years, I was turned down by every opportunity that I approached. And I get it. The economy is in really bad shape, and times are hard. Science is already this very competitive field to break into. So there are a lot of people out there that look way better on paper than I do, and I get that. That's great. Good for you. But I totally, what I can't understand are the rejections that were made by people who never saw my credentials or my resume. There was one such instance in college when I approached a professor who I was told had room in his lab for another student researcher. I came to the meeting on time. I was ready to discuss his research as I had read a few of his papers beforehand, but it became clear not long into the meeting that he was not going to take me or this meeting seriously. So after letting me know the position for which I wanted to interview was not there, it didn't exist, he offered to put me in contact with a colleague that would be willing to help a fellow chica out. And yes, he called me a chica. So not long after, I actually found out from a lab mate that he had been hired for the position that I was told did not exist by that professor only days after my meeting. So it's not just things like big events in my life that remind me I'm not who people think a scientist should be. It's little things, like the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I know, we're going to complain about this now. So all the characters on the show that are scientists are identified as socially inept, awkward, brilliant minds, but I identify more with Penny, the awkward, like, the stupid girl neighbor, so. <laughs> so that's a problem, and the second thing is that it's not just the things that are there, it's the things that aren't. If anyone in this audience can name a female scientist as popular as Bill Nye or Neil deGrasse Tyson, I will buy you a drink after the show. Because you can't, and I also don't carry cash, which they want. So. <laughs> Now that I'm in a lab, I can definitely see it takes all kinds of people to be a scientist. Yet, I still feel that pressure to be that stereotypical scientist. And sometimes it's so tempting to conform because I want people to look at me and I want them to see a good scientist. But you know what? Fuck that. I know <laughs> that I am a good scientist and that I have what it takes to go far in this field. And I enjoy being who I am, which is a girly girl who likes to have fun and is loud and obnoxious. I like who I am, and I don't need to change that to be a good scientist. So to the people out there who feel like... <laughs> um, so to the people who feel like they are not the stereotype, good, work it. That is part of how I got into the field. I went to this lecture, I asked a million questions, and I was obnoxious because I wanted my answers and I got them. And then after the lecture, I went to that amazing scientist and I told him, I want to be a part of your lab. And here I am. I'm in the field now. So I don't know how to fix this problem and I don't know how to change people's minds about me. But what I do know is that science is a field for people who have questions and are willing to work hard for those questions. It doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter what personality type you are or aren't. If people are not willing to change the stereotype of science, we are going to lose out on some great ideas and new ways of thinking. And that's not just bad for science, but everyone. Thank you. <laughs>